Hey cruise lovers, in this video I am going to be showing you the staterooms that I would avoid booking on the Carnival Mardi Gras. That's coming up. We're Kelly and Jason, exploring the world one cruise ship at a time. Our goal is to give you the details that you need by capturing as much as we possibly can on camera and hopefully bringing you some laughs along the way. Welcome to the Travel Scouts family. I have been extensively studying the Mardi Gras deck plans, and in this video, I'm going to take you deck by deck and show you specific cabin areas that you may want to avoid. Now, I also understand that choosing a cabin is a personal preference, so something that may bother me may not bother you. I just want to give you the best information possible so you can make an informed decision best for you and your family. As we're going through this video, you're gonna see the deck plan slides that I have done. Now, if you would like a copy of these slides, I have taken all of these slides and put them into one PDF document. And in this document, it has the deck plans as well as the highlighted areas of cabins to avoid and cabin numbers. If you would like a copy of the PDF, just check out in the description below. I'll have the link. All you need to do is click on the link, add your email, and the PDF will be coming right to you. Lastly, Jason and I are going to be sailing on Mardi Gras inaugural cruise or shortly after, and we are going to be covering everything on the Carnival Mardi Gras. So if you love the Mardi Gras and you plan on sailing on her, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss it when any of our content is published. Okay, let's get started. Let's start with deck number four, and we are going to be working our way from the front of the ship all the way to the back. Now deck four is the lowest deck that you can put cabins on and we're going to start in the very front and so I've highlighted several cabins right in the front of the ship and the reason why is that is where the anchor raises and lowers and so sometimes when you are really low in the front of the ship um, that can be quite noisy and it's usually lowered very early in the morning on your port days so I recommend staying away from those cabins. Moving on back, next we have a small little area that I've highlighted around the stairs and elevators. And I always tell people to avoid that area and it's not so much necessarily the elevator mechanics noise going up and down, but it's more the people congregating at the elevator. So sometimes it can get noisy, so I just recommend staying away from those first few rooms right around the stair and elevator area. Okay, the next set of rooms that I wanna to talk to are the rooms directly beside the Family Harbor Lounge in Camp Ocean. If you don't know what the Family Harbor Lounge is, it's basically a big area. They serve breakfast and snacks throughout the day. It's a family area, so um, people that have kids, there's games there, there's video games there's different things uh, it's an area especially for families so sometimes it can get loud children are having a good time and they get carried away and I'm not sure exactly how soundproof the rooms are so you may just want to be cautious when you're booking the rooms right next to the Family Harbor Lounge and Camp Ocean. Okay, and then moving on back, we have another set of elevators and again just those rooms right around the stairs and elevators and then lastly, I want to highlight on the port side of the ship, um, from about midship all the way back, all of those cabins are going to be your family harbor cabins. And there's nothing wrong with those cabins. They're going to be great cabins. But just know that they are family harbor cabins. So that means that more than likely there's going to be a lot of families around there and a lot of kids. So if you're trying to get away and have special time with just you and your husband, that might not be the best area for you. However, if you're traveling with your family, that would probably be a great area for you to book. Lastly, if you're someone that uh, has trouble with motion sickness, I would recommend actually booking a cabin on deck four or deck five because the lower you go in the ship, the less that you feel the waves. So keep that in mind. If you're getting benefit from this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And let's move on to deck number five. So deck five, we're gonna start at the front of the ship. And on the front port side, I have highlighted some rooms and those are because they are directly under the main theater. Now, if you know Carnival, if you've ever been on a Carnival cruise, their entertainment is awesome. They've got lots of loud music and dancing and everything else, so it's gonna be fun. However, if you are under those rooms, more than likely you will hear some of the booming of the bass and the music. Now, that doesn't go all night, but just be aware that you probably are going to hear some of the sounds from the main theater. So for that, for that, I recommend not booking those cabins. And then we have another 
area around the elevator staircase. I've highlighted about four cabins there. And then as we're moving back, um, I've highlighted some more cabins. Those are cabins that are going to be directly under the comedy club. Now, the comedy club sometimes runs shows until I think about one o'clock in the morning, so it doesn't go all night, but it does go fairly late into the night. So if you like to get to bed early, you may hear some sounds from the comedy club. Um, so for that, I would avoid booking cabins there. And as we move on back toward midship, I have highlighted an area of cabins, and these cabins are going to be directly under the Grand Atrium. Now, if you remember on Carnival Mardi Gras, the atrium in the daytime serves as a nice relaxing spot for people um, to sit and watch the ocean, but at nighttime, it's converted into another entertainment venue. So I'm not sure exactly what kind of entertainment Carnival is going to be doing in the atrium, although we do know that the cruise directors love to throw parties in the atrium. So for that reason, I've suggested that you stay away from the cabins directly under the atrium. And then lastly, we have two more sets of elevator and stairs. So just the cabins directly around those. I would recommend not booking. Okay, let's move on to deck eight. And deck eight, I have highlighted some cabins again. Those are going to be you're now going to be directly above the main theater. And again, the sound could possibly travel. And then I have highlighted an area right around the elevators and that's gonna be it for deck eight. Okay, moving on to deck nine, I have highlighted this area of cabins and they are right above the Havana bar. Now the Havana bar actually turns into a nightclub at night. So you could imagine there's gonna be dancing and music and partying well into the early hours. And then midship, I've highlighted an area of cabins. And again, these are the cabins that are gonna be directly above the Grand Atrium. So at that nighttime when there's uh, entertainment, you could possibly hear the sound from the atrium. And then lastly, uh, I've highlighted two areas that are directly around the stairs and elevators. Okay, for decks 10 through 14, these are great decks, and I've only highlighted a few spots, and those are just basically the areas around the elevators and stairs is the only areas that I would recommend on decks 10 through 14 to avoid. Now, let's go to deck 15. First, we have uh, an elevator stairs area with these cabins highlighted. And then the next area, I've got quite a few cabins. And the reason why I've highlighted these cabins is because they are directly below the Lido pool area. And so if you have cruised before, or you may have heard of horror stories that uh, early in the morning, the crew come out and they pull all of those lounge chairs back into their position because at night they stack them all up they mop the decks really well and everything so at the morning time they're pulling all those back out so if you like to sleep in late you may get woke up by the sound of dragging chairs okay then we have two elevator stair areas that i've highlighted here and then lastly at the very back of the ship i've highlighted another area and this is again going to be below the deck pool area okay let's go to deck 16 Again, deck 16, it's a great deck. The only thing I would recommend is not booking the cabins around the elevator stair area. Now we're gonna go to deck 17. Deck 17 is the awesome deck. It is the highest deck that you can actually book a cabin on. Um, and so the only area that I have highlighted is there is a small area. You're going to be below the Serenity deck, which again, um, the, you know, they'll be pulling out those loungers and things like that probably not as much as what they will on the Lido deck area, but it could happen. So just keep that in mind when you're booking on deck 17. And then also we have one more elevator stair area. And I just want to say again, if you have motion sickness or prone to motion sickness, you may not want to uh, book a higher deck, but you may want to stay lower. So we really hope that this information has been, been beneficial for you. And again, if you want the PDF of all of these slides with some extra information on there, go ahead and click on the link in the description area. And when you click on that link, you'll just enter your email and the PDF will come straight to you. Thank you so much for watching today. We hope to see you soon on the seas. God bless.